Hey, this is Dr. Paul Dyer. Welcome to Bridges Live. This is another show, Bridges Live. You can always reach me at drpaulistickscience.com. And thank you for all my listeners. And of course, thank you for all my sponsors. If you ever want to sponsor a show or, you know, connect to, to what we're doing, what we're trying to do globally, here, locally, and nationally, is to promote information, understanding, and action. You can always reach me at Dr. Paul W dire at gmail or you can also pay or sponsor a show by contacting me through my website drpaulholisticscience.com but let's get right to the show and i'd like to welcome my guests because on bridges live of course i like to bring all my guests on and have them talk about what they're doing what's the greatness that they do because i just think so many of us are doing so many wonderful things that never gets talked about so denzel Norris, yes. Mr. Norris, yes. welcome to Bridges Live. Hey, thank you for having me. Thank you for having me, brother. <laughs> so let's let's start from the beginning. Let's give us a little bit of a backdrop of what you are, and then we'll go from there. Besides you being a writer and a friend and a family and a brother, just give us a little bit of a taste. Well, um, yeah, my name is Denzel Norris. Uh, you know, self-published poet originally from Brooklyn, New York. <clears throat> Excuse me. I uh, currently live in Jersey now. Hold on, hold on. I got to stop you. I didn't know you were from Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm originally from Brooklyn, man. I'm from, I'm from, I'm from Boogie Island. Down, man. Oh, yeah? Oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, that's beautiful. Okay, that's beautiful. so <laughs> most of you people, if you don't know, and you're, you're, not, you're not an East Coast person like we are, or you're not from where we are, Brooklyn is Brooklyn, and Boogie Down is the Bronx. And so we always have these battles since the back of the day of the Grandmaster Flash and days like that. So most of those people totally understand what we're talking about. But for you global people, it's just two neighborhoods. (laughs) (laughs) Isn't that the truth? (laughs) But yes, brother, you know, yeah, yeah, originally from New York, man, you know, I, uh, I graduated from Boys and Girls High School right there in Brooklyn, New York, and um, I uh, went down south to North Carolina, and uh, I did some college at Wake Tech Raleigh, Wake Tech Community College in Raleigh, North Carolina, and, um, you know, eventually left and got into entrepreneurship with my dad. You know, because my father's a filmmaker. He wrote, directed, and produced four films, and, um, you know, I was able to get a lot of, you know, experience, you know, being under his wing, and then teaching me a lot of things about film and then about, you know, selling and entrepreneurship. So, really, it just came down to me being able to, you know, make that transition, you know, from the knowledge I was able to gain from him and create my own lane right here as far as, you know, with, you know poetry writing. Cause I love poetry. Grew up reading Edgar Allan Poe, Maya Angelou, Langston Hughes. Those are the poets who had, you know, a lot of impact in my life. And, um, you know, I just, you know, write poetry because, you know, it makes me, you know, feel good and it, you know, helps me express myself because I grew up being a guy who didn't, you know, usually express himself too much, you know, the way, he, you know, the way I would like to, would have liked to. But, um, you know, poetry has really broken me out of my shell, man. I'm able to, you know, communicate a lot more, you know, wrote four books of poetry. So, you know, things are really happening. Man. You know, for me, you know, I, I, as you know, Denzel, I teach a lot of emotional education. Most of the people know that I teach a lot of emotional science and things like that. And I want to ask you about growing up, you know, you, in the different inner city lives, most people don't understand that a lot of things get suppressed. And when you said you found your voice in poetry, do you think that was not recognized when you were a youth? Not from your parents or your father, but from, like, the community or your school? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, definitely, man. You know, I just, um, I mean, for sure, you know, I think the most important thing we can do to uh, be able to help, the, you know, the youth coming up and, you know, other people as well is, you know, giving them the confidence and, you know, the, uh, you know, the, 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 the uh, motivation to express themselves. Because, I, I mean, a lot of, I, I mean, just me, I think a lot of the youth is frustrated because they're trying to be heard and not really being heard, man. You know, because you're just coming from different perspectives. You know, I mean, the, you know, the, your mom and dad are coming from a mom and dad perspective. The children are coming from a children's perspective. And I think we just, you know, as a, you know, generation, man, we need to be able to, you know, get into the minds of the younger generation, man, you know, and really give them the confidence to express themselves regardless of what it is. You know, that's you know, whatever, doctor, you know, being, you know, whatever. You know, we got to be able to express them and push them to be able to, you know, live out their dreams and live out these things because, you know, it's like, you know, it's, sometimes we can underestimate, you know, 
uh, being older, we can underestimate that the power that our words have, telling somebody, you know, certain things who are younger than us. You know, we got to really, really be careful about how we speak to them, speaking to the youth with, you know, with, 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 with power, with clarity, with, you know, with, 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 with provision, you know, being able to give them that confidence to, you know, be somebody in life. Because as a young age being closed in, you know, it's like you just constantly get older and older and older, you know, really not dealing with that, you know, insecurity or, or that, you know, closed, you know, mindedness type of, you know, you know, feeling that you're having, you know, feeling like you don't really want to open up. You don't really want to show the world, you know, what you have, you know, but I think we, you know, do a better job of, you know, giving them the confidence from young. We get it, you know, really, really see the youth blossom a lot more, man, because being in, you know, you know, inner cities and stuff like that, you know, a lot of things going on. A lot of people are taking different paths, a lot of influence, you know, it's so much to get wrapped up in. You know, you know, specifically talking about you know the black community and other communities as well, but um, but just you know, I I think we definitely need to do that, man. Get the confidence to the young ones to speak up and express themselves, because I know I feel as being a young kid not knowing you know how to get what's inside of me out. You know, it's something that we talk about the spoken word, and 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 there's you know there's so many poets or and we I wonder. Do people are people reading poetry because so many people now on what you call social media they go with more memes than they are the but memes is a form of poetry isn't it? Can you say it again, brother? It, isn't memes a, like a little form of poetry? Oh, oh yeah, meme, yeah. Because because if you think about it, listen, man, one line could change somebody's life. That's how I look at it. Yeah. It could be one line, you know, that's that's a, that, that's a poem that totally changes the mindset of your thinking, of your, you know, the way you act, the way you perceive a certain situation that you're in. One line can do it. So it's like, if that's the power one line can give, what about a whole book? You know what I mean? So it's just, it's powerful, man. So when okay, I want to thank you for everyone for listening to Bridges Live again. I'm talking to uh, Mr. Denzel Norris. He's a he's published four poetry books. You can he's going to give you where you can access his books. You can buy from him, but also let you know that you're listening to Bridges Live. And I'm Dr. Paul. Of course, you can catch us all the time. You can listen to some of the podcasts on iHeart and iTunes Radio, or you can also um, just download it from the YouTube channel. But writing, and I like what Mr. Denzel said, words are important. What we say, not only to ourselves, but what we say to others is important. It can hurt and destroy, and we need to understand, using our words, we should mean what we say. Yes. Yes. So, so in the spoken, and when you're writing poetry, let me ask you this. Yes. Some of the things that people have talked about, they say majority of communication is done by nonverbal. How do you feel about that? Uh, I, I, I feel like uh, I, I feel like to to a certain to a certain degree it's true because um, we, we we communicate you know nonverbally a lot you know on, on, during our daily routines you know with family or friends or with, you know just anywhere you know you can you know it make a certain look it means you know it means something you know you can you know you know get out this, you know, just make any type of movement or do certain things to really communicate non-verbally. But, I mean, you know, the, the most, the most, um, you know, impactful way, I would say, is definitely um, through writing, through, you know, expression. You know what I mean? You've got to be able to, you know, express yourself. So, I mean, as far as just, you know, impactfulness, I mean, being verbal and, you know, actually reading something that's going to fill your mind and impact your spirit is a lot more, you know, powerful than I would say just something that's not non-verbal. Yeah, I would definitely say that. Because the the one thing about when people only focus focus on the nonverbal, they miss what we say. Yes. Yes. Yes, I totally agree. I totally agree, man. I totally agree. I think that um, you know, we 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 just uh, we definitely have to just you know communicate a lot more, just as people, man. You know, it's 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 just the power, just on a day to day basis. I'm able to see, you know, the poems that I've wrote, in the, you know, written in these books, the way it impacts other lives, man. You know, the way they're able to read something and feel like, oh, this has changed my life. One line there, you know, that whole poem there, this thing here. So it's just, I'm trying to tell you, man, I mean, the power of poetry is, you know, it's, it, 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 it is very impactful, man. 
it is very impactful. So most people, most people can't tell by listening or if, if they didn't hear or miss something. But you're a young black man. Most people know that I'm a black man, but you're a young black man. Now, does yes. does writing as a young black man and 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 where I was, I I almost have to clarify in today's society, does that mean more? to write what you are and where you come from so people get it? Because I know when I write poetry, or when I write anything, I'm, I can only yes. write from my perspective. Yes. Yes, that's it. And, 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 and uh, yes, I, I, I think it's very significant, being that I'm a young black man here in America, man, you know, writing and doing that, because I meet, you know, black people all the time who tell me, listen, man, keep doing what you're doing, brother, because... It's not many of us out here, you know, still writing books, still, you know, using our, you know, our, our, you know, our intellect, you know, still using, you know, you know, you know, your writing, your, your your abilities to be able to impact lives in a positive way, you know. And to me, I feel like it's more than just me writing books, touring around different, you know, cities, different states, different malls, promoting and selling these books. It's much more than that. I am representation for a younger black man out there who wants to be able to come and, you know, write a book. And you know, really thirsty. You know, you're like, 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 like hungry to be able to be a book writer as they get older. You know, I look at, I look at it more than just me being here. You know, selling these books and doing that. I am representing what, you know, what is possible for the youth coming up to, you know, to, to accomplish. You know, for you know, books, wrote them. You know, coming right from Brooklyn, New York. You know, it's not an easy thing, but it can be done, man. And I take pride in the representation that I have. You know, the, the, the representation that I can, you know, be able to, you know, supply the youth with. You know, and um, you know, be able to give them the confidence to you know grow up and impact other lives and express themselves in this way. So I think pride in it. Yes. Yeah. So, what? Why poetry over the other? Like you know, I've I've written self help books and I've written poetry. So, is was poetry just calling you out? Yeah, yeah, it, it definitely was. You know, because I've always you know to me you know I feel like you know rapping and poetry is like the same alley. You yeah. Know, same alley. You know and. Um, yeah, one has a beat, you know, one you can go a cappella without a beat. But at the end of the day, you know, I've just always, you know, had that desire to express myself, you know. So just um, reading those certain poems, you know, from, you know, Maya Angelou and Edgar Allan Poe, certain poems that I've read from them and other artists as well, it just really hit me and it impacted me. You know, I've always been impacted with music too and, you know, stuff like that. But, you know, just the, I don't know, just the format of it, just the fact that you don't have to rhyme with every line with a poem. You don't have to, you know, do, you know, you can just express yourself and just get what's inside out. So that's really the lane that I took. But I look forward to, you know, maybe making music in the future and stuff like that because I do, you know, I really, really love music. I love, you know, beats and producing beats and stuff like that. But, um, you know, poetry was just, you know, it, it was just so accessible for me. I didn't need a beat machine. I didn't need nothing. All I needed was my pen and my mind and my yeah. feeling and the paper. And just and it's just what it is. And it just happened, you know. Yeah. When someone has read your books, and um, and I'm going to have you read a poem or two, when someone has read your books, you have gotten some amazing feedback. What are some of those feedbacks you've gotten? Man, I've got so much feedback, man. I literally, I mean, well, one of my books, um, Thoughts from a Dark Room That Lit Up, that's the one of depression and mental health. And it's just one quick story. This, I, I met a brother, um, a young brother, man. He was in, I was in a college station, Texas, on tour, and um, you know, in a mall promoting, selling my books and. Um, I was able to, you know, sell the book to him. I think uh, at the time he was about 18, maybe 19. And uh, he bought, purchased that book for me. And uh, he just told me at the stand, he said that he was really going through a lot of different things, feeling depressed. You know, he used to cut himself most of his life, but he stopped cutting himself, but he still was still very depressed. So I just went, prayed with him a good five minutes. And, um, you know, he purchased the book for me. And two hours later, he texted me and said, thank you from the bottom of my heart. So I already know just the presence of God being right there in the midst of our prayer and, you know, what he read from the book definitely impacted his life in a positive way. And then I've had, you know, other people who are, you know, come talking about the other books, especially, you know, the bullying ones that I just released, the anti-bully poetry book. They've come and told me I was just giving them, you know, a different perspective on bullying and, you know, how it's serious. We really need to, you know, talk to our young ones and older ones, you know, because it's more than just, you know, the young ones go for bullying. It's, it's, oh, it's elderly as well, man. You know, people being bullied at work, at school, at home. You know what I mean? There's so many different levels to it. So, you know, people, you know, coming back, giving me great reviews on the bullying book, telling me it makes them really cry. It provokes their thoughts. 
gives them a different perspective on bullying, lets them see that it's more than just the bully and the bullier. It's the man in the middle being bullied than to being a bully. Absolutely. You know, I can't beat him until I got to join him, you know? So it's just a lot of things that's been going on. And, um, you know, and, uh, you know, I just, uh, you know, take pride in being able to, you know, express myself, man. And I just, you know, I, I don't take it for granted. I know how serious it is, you know, for people to, you know, to, to how, how, like how serious, you know, how serious it is. And I want to be able to, um, you know, contribute to that and, you know, impact another lives through my writing, man. So, you know, I've been so, I've gotten so many emails, text messages, and calls. And people have told me that they're really going to be impacted by these books, man, because, you know, it's so relatable. It's so relatable, and it just changes the mind. Like I said, one line can change the entire life of a person. So imagine four books, you know, <laughs> it, it's just a blessing. You know, when we're, when we're young kids and when you were a young kid, did you ever think that you you would publish four books and you'd be out there when you were in the little town of Brooklyn, you know, the little Brooklyn? Oh, can, you, can you repeat that? I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? Again? Yeah. Did, did you think when you were a little boy in Brooklyn going to the Boys and Girls High School that you'd be a published author? Man, I had no idea. I know I had it in me. I loved writing. It was inside my spirit. But I really grew up wanting to play football. You know, I just I wanted to play football. I wanted to do that. I want you know what I mean. I just had a passion to do it. But you know, as time you know went on, you know, I got to my senior year. Just you know, just you know, kind of zapped out of me, man. And I just, you know, felt a shift happening within me. But I didn't, you know, exactly know I would end up here, man, years later, you know, in a Rundle Mills Mall in Maryland, you know, being here since May 24th, still promoting and selling my books. I mean, it, it is such a blessing. It is such a blessing. You know what I mean? So God's and touched I, your, so God has touched your life and you felt yeah. it. So tell us about when you felt it, when he touched you. Um, can you repeat that last part? Yeah, tell, tell us about the, you know, God has touched your life. And so tell us about the time when you felt his first hand on you and say, hey, Denzel, I got a place for you. I know this is uh, what I want you to do. <laughs> I, 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 start, I started feeling like that. I started, that started happening to me when I started saying, you know what? When I started sending the poems out to family and friends, the little short poems that I started writing. I started sending it out to family and friends. And once I sent it out to them, it started impacting them in a major way. So he was just speaking to me like, you know what? You know, I had a you know conversation amongst my brothers and, you know, we just, you know, was going back and forth about our thoughts. That's why I've named the series of this poetry series, you know, the name of the series is called Thoughts. Because it's just, you know, thoughts, we all have them and we all talked about them. Okay. <laughs> I I I I'm so sorry, Dr. Paul. Yeah, I'm just here, but um, yeah, it, it's okay, it's okay, Dr. Paul. But I just I just went through um a time where, you know, God was just really speaking to me in my spirit and letting me know that um these poems or more than you just, you know, writing it down and expressing yourself, this is going to change lives. This is going to impact people. And once I started seeing the responses from the people who, um, you know, I started sending the poems out to, it made me realize, like, you know what? I, I need to be able to put a book out. I need to express myself. I need to sh show this to the world. You know it. I need to show this to the world because people need to be impacted by these poems, man. So, you know, when God reveals it to you, you have to, you, you can't be disobedient. you got to be, thank you so much. You, you can't you can't be obedient. I mean, I mean, I mean they're disobedient. Excuse me. You have you you have no okay. You um let, let, let me sign this for you. Let me sign this. So uh yeah when when when. So yeah, yes sir. Hello. I I hear you. I just I'm I'm listening to you work and I think you're doing great because like you said you can't be disobedient. You're doing what God's chosen you to do, and you're signing an autograph right now for a person who just bought your book because you're touching lives. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. 
So as we're waiting for Denzel Norris to come back, um, you're listening yes, to... Yes, uh, yes, 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 we're here. We're here right now. I know. Uh, well, we're, you're listening to Bridges Live with Dr. Paul. Remember, you can always catch us on um, iHeart and iTunes Radio. And you can also, we're going to get to Dennis right now. He's going to finish. He just happened to be signing a book and autographing a book for a customer or a person. But it's not just a customer. It's a life. You know what I mean? You're touching lives. Yeah. You're not touching money. You're touching lives. Exactly, and that's the most important thing to me. I said to myself, you know what? If if I am able, I already told I, before I even got to the point where I got four books. I told guys in the beginning, if I'm able to touch one life through this book, I, I feel like I've done my job. But it's just such a blessing and such in the, the grace and the mercy He has on my life to allow me to touch thousands of people the way I've touched and to tour over you know five states. I've been in Louisiana, Beaumont, Texas, Pensacola, Florida, Jackson, Mississippi, Meridian, Mississippi, Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Guys in Alabama, you know, these are places that I've gone promoting and selling my books, man. And, you know, I, I just have a passion, you know, to inspire the world and impact other lives through my poetry writing, man. I really do. Yes. So I, I, I've been writing poetry like because that's what we do as a creative artist. And I pulled out a poem that I want to read and share with you while we're on the radio together on the, on this our conversation. So I'm going to read you mine, and then you're going to go and read me yours, okay? Yes. It's called I Saw You. When I was pushing my suitcase, you looked down at me. When I was drinking my latte... You looked down on me. When I was sweating on the courts, you looked down at me. When I graduated summa cum laude, you looked down on me. When I was lying in the doorway, you looked down at me. When I was driving my loud car, you looked down on me. When I picked up my child from school, you looked down at me. When I married my beautiful queen, you looked down on me. When I went to vote, you beat me down. When I had my hands up, you shot me down. I saw you look down on me. I saw you. Do you see me? Wow. Wow, man. Man, that makes you think right there, man. Whoa. <laughs> man, great phone right there, brother. Great phone right there. Oh, man. I really enjoyed it, brother. I really enjoyed that. Well, now uh, we want you to pick out one for us here on Bridges yes. Live. And please, please read. Okay. This poem is going to be it's titled Life, and it's from my second book. Okay? All right. I'm constantly getting tested. Every day I'm constantly getting tangled with the beast. And he's chasing my soul down with the leash. And the sidewalk walking my nights trying to dodge a crease. This program wants to maneuver me for peace. This life is sort of similar to cleats. When you step in some crazy things, it's hard to get it off your feet. Swift movements. Mediocre work is not accepted. A false claim without the individuals protected. You judge of how much you have in this society. And when it comes to justice, I don't see any. We're all perspective speaking. What perspective you speak it from? Never have much money, but I hope I run into something. I gotta get into heaven, Lord. Tell me where the entrance is. He said it matters where your interest is. You have to peep where the encryption is. It's all around. You gotta spread its existence. Okay, fine. I'm on a mission now. World leaders behind the scenes, soon to burn churches down. Me and my team intervening the meetings, proceeding to conquer adversity, to stand up for what we believe in. If you stand for God, be sure to be battling demons. My soul is all I got. Don't care if my flesh is bleeding. It's gonna be kind of hard getting inside of the zone that I'm in. Life. That's it. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm glad this is a podcast because people are going to have to replay that over and over because there were some things in there. It's kind of like listening to music. This, there, There's some undertones in there. You almost have like three, four layers of this in there. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Did you know you write in layers like that? Yeah, 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 man. You know, I noticed it. it just, I don't know. It just, I don't know. It just, I don't know. When I started to do it, it just you know, it came to happen, man. But, um, yeah, <laughs> Trust me, people. When you when you replay this over and over, you understand there was four. I I got just from him speaking it. I got four different levels of where his heart was bouncing from and to. 
and that was that's and that's what poetry does and that's what painting does that's what the creative mind does it allows us to take us from one place to the other but here's the other thing i want people to hear in your poetry that you just read we are in this life together and there's people suffering yes Yes, man. Yes. And and, and yes. don't just take us as poetry. Take us as the life we're speaking to life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So yes, sir. How, how can we get a hold of you? Give us your website. Well, um, the the website is currently down, but I'm on all I'm on social media platforms: Instagram, Facebook. My Instagram is underscore Denzel Norris. My first and last name. And my Facebook is just Denzel Norris, D-E-N-Z-E-L-N-O-R-R-I-S. I'm on both, you know, every single day, you know, promoting and, you know, um, doing those things. So uh, please reach out to me on there. Well, can if someone wants to, do you want to give out your phone number or you just do the social yes, yes, media? That's yes. fine. I, I, I definitely want to give, I definitely want to give my cell phone number. Um, I'm here at Arundel Mills Mall right here in Hanover, Maryland, and I'll be here to the end of the year going into next year. I'm right here, you know, by the full court, um, Faith Over Fair Productions, and my cell phone number is 336-686-4150. Again, 336-686-4150. I have four impactful poetry books that will change your life and your family's life. Only 10 bucks a book right here at Arundel Mills Mall. You God bless, man. And you know what? I'm going to ask you, and because the, the the spirit of God is working in you and with you, so have us pray before we depart, my brother. Oh yes, yes, yes. Send us send us off with a prayer. Okay, okay. Let's let's do it. Um, Father God, we come to you in prayer right now. Um, we want to thank you for this opportunity to you know share this time together, you know, together over this phone, dear Lord. I want to, uh, you know, send positive, impactful energy out to this, you know, all the listeners in this world, or you know, all, all, all the people who have you know, tuned in, all the people who haven't tuned in. I want to be able to, you know, plead the blood of Jesus right now over every single life, over every vessel, over every soul. In Jesus Christ's name, we thank you for what you're about to do, Lord. We, you know, we pray for peace. We pray for understanding to everyone and everyone's life today, and we thank you. Thank you in abundance for the grace and mercy that you give us every single day. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much. You're listening to Bridges Live. I'm Dr. Paul W. Dyer. You're listening to author, poetry writer, Mr. Denzel Norris. Please contact us. And if you have any questions, always I welcome your comments and your thoughts. And God bless. God bless you, dear Denzel. Hey, God bless you too, brother. Thank you for having me.